All right, so we're working on electrical. Most of this I've already started. Um, I'm using for my electrical box this Calypso. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it off of Amazon. Um, it is a 11 by 15 by 9, I believe, was the dimensions. Um, here is the electronics. As you can see, I started getting some of it wired. Um, What's nice about that electrical box is it comes with this back plate. So you can see here all my stuff is bolted down nicely. So and we'll get the uh, all the wires cleaned up and zip tied. Um, so we'll kind of go through this part quickly for you guys. Again, when you buy the JD Garage plans to build this it comes with a full wiring schematic so left is to wire in the X, Y, and Z access to the servers, sorry, the servos, and then uh, we're going to mount them to the box. So, eh, holes came out pretty close. I went a little too far over on a couple of them. I think I got caught up on one of these ribs when I was marking them on the blue tape, but that's okay. So that'll be a vent. And then we got some uh, vents back here so the air can travel through. Uh, on mine, my, my power board sits right here with the fan. So this is straight across from the fan. And then it's got vents on the back side of it, circuit board. So this will travel down those same vents. And we got our 110 power cord installed. So, looking good. Here's what I was talking about. Nice straight shot over to that fan. This is vented on the back side. So, it'll be vented there. Power cord will come in, go to here. Now we're going to work on the Adreno however you pronounce that so we got this cord it's gonna plug in and go straight out the box here so we want to mark it kind of a rough estimate where it's going to be and then we're going to drill that Got a nice straight shot to the Adreno. So now I gotta try to figure out one of these connectors that I can fit over this fat neck, but we'll still tighten around the uh, the wire there. What I may end up doing is just having to bulk up some electrical tape around the wire so it can pinch and hold it in there tightly. Nice 
nice straight shot. This is tight. Won't be able to pull it out of the Adreno. So what I end up doing is I took a piece of a uh, vacuum hose, the right diameter of the cable, slid it in half and use that, if we can get it to focus, as a spacer inside the stock gasket and that worked out perfectly. So now we need to take the board out. We can actually unplug it and slide the whole board over and then out. So, and we got a little bit of movement in here. Next, we're working on our shielded <clears throat> um, trigger wire for the torch. This is the switch that is on the Z-axis. When it touches down, it clicks that little switch. Um, so we're using a three terminal. That way we can pass our shielding. There's our shield wire. We'll pass our shielding through. I got this side built already. So, again, just like before, I used a little piece of small vacuum line to take up the, the difference there. But terminal one is red, terminal three is black, terminal two is the shield wire. So we'll be able to mount this on the side here and it will wire into our terminals here and here or whichever two and then the shielded wire needs to go to a ground which what I'm going to do is I'm going to run when I run my 110 volt the earth ground here I'm going to do a little splice to each one of these housings because they're metal I'm going to ground those through one of the mounting bolts and then I'll just run this shielding wire to share that ground because I have to shield the motor wires anyway. So they'll all share a ground or maybe even from up here if the housing's grounded, I can use these terminals there. Quick correction, um, that two wire with the shield isn't going to the Z-axis switch. It's going to the CNC plasma cutter controller if yours is CNC capable for the torch and it comes with the connectors here so it's the pin one and two to the torch itself um, and this is for um, part of the other wiring that we'll get into later I think for torch height controller and everything which we're gonna end up doing eventually but yeah so the, basically what we're gonna end up doing is taking that shielded wire that I just built to wire and it'll come into this which plugs right into the CNC machine and then We'll just terminate the shield at this housing so we can actually terminate it inside this metal. Um, and that and then it's going to be on, it's going to be grounded on the inside of the um, circuit board there. So it'll be a grounded wire all the way up and then we'll terminate it right at the connector. So there's no interference. There you go. So we're going to do the same thing for the X, Y, and Z axis. So those are, this is a two wire shield. Those ones will be a four wire with a shield. So I'll probably use a, a five plug so I can run that shield through there. But it's getting there. Okay. So um, for the end of this video, uh, we had to order some stuff. It just came in. Um, I decided to go with um, these type of connectors. You can get this entire kit. It's pretty inexpensive on Amazon. Um, but this is going to be the connectors at the motors. Um, we'll end up using whatever terminal amount we need at each motor. Uh, got a big thing of heat shrink. Um, some wire loom, the good woven kind of wire loom. And then what I also picked up was a ground bus here. So what I think I'm going to do, if I can fit this in my electrical box, I'm going to run all the 
uh, shielded wires um, to earth ground, basically, to the ground bus. So they'll all come down to here, one location for the shielded wires. So that way they are they can drain any residual um, voltage from the kick on of the plasma cutter. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. The next episode we bring you will be finishing up the wiring. Um, I ordered my slats. I'm doing my bedpan slightly different way than I've seen online. I mean, I, there's probably other people have done it this way. Uh, I'm going to use some one inch angle iron with uh, stainless steel angle iron since it'll be sitting down in the water and then two inch of the steel slats. Um, and then what we'll do is on the one inch, we'll cut them down um, for the slits. We'll cut them down to half inch or three quarter inch. So they sit down almost in the entire one inch V there. So stay tuned for the next episode and thanks for watching this one guys.